Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey, this week I'm gonna go ahead and talk about GFCI. What is it? What does it do for us? Now, GFCI stands for Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. And before I say what it is, I first need to point out that there's a C in the title GFCI. Too many people I hear say GFI. Why don't you put the C in there? Okay, what did the C do to you? There's nothing wrong with saying C, right? In today's world, you don't wanna exclude certain things. And a C is one of those things you don't exclude. C stands for circuit, people. It's not a GFI, ground fault interrupter, ground fault circuit interrupter. As a matter of fact, from now on, you should enunciate the C just a little bit more. So next time, I want you to practice this way. GFCI, there you go. So now you know it's a circuit and it's only going to disconnect that circuit should there be, say it with me, a ground fault. All right. Let's now get into it. What is GFCI? What does it do for us? Well, as the name says, ground fault circuit interrupter. Sometimes we got to figure out what a ground fault means, right? It's an electrical term that we typically use, but it just simply means that there's a shortage of electrons coming back. What do I mean by that? Well, in a 120 volt situation, actually, yeah, 120 volt situation, you're going to have a supply side, which typically we call the hot. This is the line that actually all the electricity for that circuit comes down. Okay, so you have your supply side, the hot side. All the electrons going out to do some work. They've got to travel back. Well, when they travel back, they travel back on that neutral wire. Okay, finally go back to the transformer. They found home. Electrons are happy. Well, electrons, just like everyone else, don't want to work. And if they can find a shortcut to get back home, then that's what they'll do. Okay, if they don't have to go do work, they'll find a shortcut, get back home another way. Another way to get home is to use the ground. Okay, so here's what's going on with the GFCI, right? The GFCI is simply monitoring all the electrons going down the hot wire and then monitoring the electrons coming back on the neutral wire. And as long as they're the same, everything's good. But if there's a shortage of electrons coming back on the neutral, then that means those electrons found a shortcut, right? They found a shortcut to ground. If there's a shortage somewhere between, say, 4 and 7 milliamps, we'll just say 5 milliamps, all right, then the little um, uh, switch inside opens up, okay? It just opens up the switch, okay? A lot of people get this confused. They will think that that is actually um, not only circuit protection, but they'll say it's over amperage. Well, they're really not designed for over amperage because, of course, you're connected to a circuit already. The breaker, the breaker is designed for over amperage. In this case, though, your GFCI just looks at a short. Hey, electrons went out, they didn't come back. They found a shortcut. Here's the reason why we have it, okay? We understand that water is conductive, right? And if we, the humans, are touching anywhere around that outlet, touching that outlet, the source, and then touching water, well then, of course, we could be the path for these electrons to find a shortcut back home. Okay, so the GFCI, Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter, is there to protect you, the human, anytime there's an outlet within six foot of water. Now, why six foot? Well, it's because the average Texan is about six foot plus. So we've got to protect us. You regular folk that may be less than six foot, you're automatically, you can't reach it anyway. It's like you got T-Rex arms. I can't touch the water. Still kind of protected, okay? So anywhere within six foot. In the RV, this is where we're going to be protected. I'll just break it down into three categories for you. Your bathroom, kitchen, and then outdoors. Because on all of those, if there's an outlet there and you could touch water, then it needs to be GFCI protected, okay? Now that doesn't mean you have a GFCI outlet in every single one of those locations. We typically put the GFCI in the first part of the circuit, or at least anywhere where it needs to be protected, and then all other subsequent outlets that need to be protected are daisy-chained um, on the output of that, okay? So, being first in line of that circuit, if, if the GFCI on any of those outlets after the GFCI sees electrons go out and don't see them coming back, then it trips and all the outlets trip. You may see this as you're in the kitchen, you're trying to make some coffee, 
someone's in the uh, bathroom trying to blow dry their hair, something like that. Now the breaker would trip, right? And you lose everything. That's because it's on the same circuit. And that's where we get the term circuit. So there you go. And now one more thing, a quirk. If the breaker trips on that GFCI circuit, guess what you can't do, okay? Because as soon as that breaker trips, typically what will happen with the GFCI circuit is the um, reset button will switch out, right? So it goes into, nope, there's no electricity, opens up. You can't reset that reset button by pressing on it alone. You ever notice that? And that's simply because it will not engage unless there's electricity going to the outlet first. So if you're ever at your GFCI outlet, and the reset button is engaged, in other words, it's pushed out, right? And you're trying to push it back in and it's pushing back on you pretty good. You can't, you can't push it. That may be an indicator that your breaker is stripped. So go over to your uh, service panel, your breaker panel box, look at the GSCI outlet, and sometimes even breakers will fool you. Go ahead and turn it off, reset it, turn it back on, then go back and reset your GFCI. There's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just wanna learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, roll the bloopers. All right, are we ready? All right. Someone else is gonna have to make up some, uh, some uh, whatever we call these things. I don't even know what we call them in bloopers. Look at that, all in one shot. Notice I don't do bloopers. Just one shot Todd, that's what they call me.